Welcome to another Three Steps to Sketch. In this video, we will graph a shifted cosine graph, y equals one half cosine, two x plus one. And so looking at this, you'll notice that the shift is vertical. It does not have a phase shift um, because we see the input of the cosine function is simply two x. So we're really just dealing with a vertical shift here. All right, so here's our outline and our reminder of our equation. All right, we see this is in the general form y equals a cosine bx minus c plus d. Okay, of course, c is zero. We mentioned that earlier. Um, but knowing this will help, we know that we do have a shift and we'll want to account for that. It's a vertical shift, that plus one at the end. All right, so let's start with step one, find the essentials. We're first going to work on our base graph, so we'll identify A and B. Uh, so we see A is the coefficient in front of cosine, that'll be one half. So our amplitude is one half. That's the distance from the midline of the graph to a maximum or to a minimum. All right, so that's slightly vertically shrunk from our typical cosine of x function. All right, now we can go to b. We see b is the coefficient of x, so in this case it'll be two. So b tells us first how many cycles happen between zero and two pi, so we should have two cycles of cosine in that horizontal distance. And it also helps us find the period. We know for cosine we calculate the period by two pi over b, so we'll go ahead and say two pi divided by two is pi. And that's our period or the length of one horizontal cycle. So you see the period makes sense with what we said earlier about B that we should have two cycles of cosine happening between zero and two pi because one cycle happens between zero and pi. All right, so now let's move on to labeling our axes. And we choose this very intentionally, especially the horizontal labels. We're going to choose the period divided by four to be our horizontal label. And this ensures that all of our key points in the next step of the base pattern will align with how we've labeled our tick marks. You could choose anything, but we choose very intentionally so that we have a nice, neat looking graph and so that it's just easy for us. Okay, so we'll count by period divided by four, so that's pi divided by four. All right, and then for our vertical tick marks, um, one usually works really well, so that's what we're going to use here. Let's go ahead and take a, a minute to label. So for the horizontal tick marks, let's count by pi over four. So we have one pi over four, two pi over four, which reduces to pi over two, three pi over four, four pi over four, okay? Um, a quick check here, your fourth tick mark with this setup for scale labels should always match your period. That's a good way to double check that you're on the right track. All right, so it does, we have pi, that's our period. All right, we have five pi over four, six pi over four, which reduces, seven pi over four, and eight pi over four, which reduces to two pi. All right, so I'm going to pause for a second to get my negative side of my horizontal axis labeled um, and go ahead and label it. It'll be exactly the same, um, but just with negative values. Okay, so here is the entire horizontal axis labeled. And now let's label the vertical axis quickly, just counting by one. Okay, if you'd wanted to label this counting by one half, if you'd like to just let whatever A is be your label, um, your unit label, that's completely okay. I usually choose one just so if I'm graphing several equations, I can see the difference um, whether there's a vertical stretch or a vertical shrink happening, um, just comparing them side by side. So whatever you prefer to do will work great. All right, so the last part of step one, remember step one is really the, the meat of it. You do all your analysis and planning in step one, and then everything else will just fall into place in the next two steps. Um, so our final part is to identify our shifts. And so again, looking back, at our general form equation, we said that we do not have anything. It's just two X, it's not minus or plus anything. So we actually do not have a phase shift. 
C over B, well, C is zero, so we would put zero or just nothing there. We don't have any horizontal movement going on, so we'll just put zero. But we do have D equal to a positive one. And if you wanna make yourself a note, this means you're gonna move your base pattern up one. Um, so we'll do that in step three. All right, so that's step one wrapped up. We have found all these essential information and we've analyzed and we are ready to get a nice looking graph. So step two, let's plot our base pattern. So this is not the final graph. Make sure that you plot this lightly because we will be shifting it in step three. Um, you may want to even use a different color. I like to do that. All right, so the base pattern for cosine, and notice this one has not got a negative out front, um, so it's not reflected, it's your traditional base pattern. So it will be maximum, zero, minimum, zero. Okay, and our maximum we know will happen on the y-axis. Again, this is our base graph, um, not shifted yet. Um, so it will happen on the y-axis and its y-coordinate will just be a. So zero, one half is our first point. Um, this is the maximum of our base graph. Okay, our next point will happen at our first horizontal tick mark to the right, pi over four, and it's a zero or an x-intercept. Okay, then our next base pattern point will be a minimum. It's gonna happen at pi over two and it's just the opposite value of a for its y-coordinate, so it's negative one-half. Okay, we're rounding out our pattern at the third horizontal tick mark to the right of the origin, and it's another x-intercept. And let's go ahead and put the first point, our next maximum, so that starts the next cycle. That'll just help us when we're sketching. All right, so this is our base pattern, and that's all we really need to do in step two. Step three we will shift, sketch, and repeat. Okay, so we if we had multiple shifts, we could do both of them at the same time. We're just going to be applying these shifts to the green intermediate points from step two. Um, but really all we have to do here is move everything up one. And those will be our final points for one cycle of our graph. So take each green point, shift up one unit, and we'll make these points bigger because we know these are going to be our final points. Okay, and notice you see the entire cosine curve staying intact, it just shifted up one. All right, now what were our x-intercepts? Of course, are no longer x-intercepts, but they are still on the midline of the function. Um, our midline turns into y equals one. Okay, and so let's go ahead and sketch this curve. Okay, here's the midline I was talking about. So you can see those are the shifted points that came from what were the zeros or x-intercepts. So that's just a nice thing to notice. All right, and so let's repeat. Let's get a couple more cycles here. And what's so great about all of our trig functions is once you have one cycle of the pattern or of the graph, it's a pattern. So all you have to do is repeat. Um, so it's just that repetition of that pattern. So let's move to the right. We had a maximum. So at the next tick mark, because of how we designed our scale, we'll get a midline point, a minimum, a midline point, a maximum. Okay, so we can sketch that. We have a whole nother cycle in here. Make sure you turn your cosine curve down from that maximum. And we can go in the other direction as well. So if you wanna move far away from your final point, you can do that. So from the y-axis, one, two, three, four. So you could start with maximum, midline, minimum, midline, and you could graph like that. Or let's do one final cycle. You could also work backward and just keep that pattern going. Midline, minimum, midline, maximum. So whichever feels most comfortable to you. All right, so this is pretty great. We have four full cycles of cosine here. Um, another thing you can double check before we finish up, remember B, we said was two, so we should see two cycles of cosine happening between zero and two pi. And we do see that, we see this purple cycle one and this orange cycle two. And that's really all there is to it. So this is how you can graph a shifted cosine function. Um, check out in the video description, there are links to more examples of 
cosine, both shifted and unshifted graphs, um, as well as other trig functions.